welcome to the Kern Lafco Commission's last meeting of 2022. This is also the last meeting for Commissioner Parlier and last meeting for Commissioner Fowler as our chair. There's an interesting mix of items on tonight's agenda that are not typically on our normal meetings. There are a couple of notes regarding how this meeting is held both in person and by video conference. Let me provide what I think will be helpful tips for running the meeting smoothly. For our guests in the room, which is Gary, he already knows how this works. Let's move on. <laughs> for those attending by video conference, if you're from an agency or the public, your microphone is muted until the chair recognizes you and the host unmutes your microphone. There will be an opportunity to speak on specific items on the agenda. Please use the raise hand function on Zoom to re be recognized. The raise hand function is di in different places depending on your version and the device you're using to participate. Mr. Rice, as host, is in charge of the Zoom portion of the meeting. If anyone gets disruptive, Mr. Rice has authority to remove them from Zoom. Or if anyone needs to recuse himself, Mr. Rice can place them in the waiting room and bring them out, back out again when the agenda item is completed. That's also true for closed session t t tonight. All votes will be roll call votes. Commissioners on Zoom, please make sure you are unmuted when you, you, you vote as we are recording and need to hear your response. Thank you everyone for working with us. Uh, I turn it back to the chair to start the meeting. Thank you. Welcome to the Local Agency Formation Commission County of Kern State of California meeting of December 7th, 2022. We'll start with the special notice regarding remote public participation due to COVID-19. Pursuant to government code 54963, meetings will be held at both a physical location and by video teleconference to attend to any health and safety concerns of the panelists and or participants. The LAFTA Commission staff and public may choose to participate in person, phone or by video conference using the following. Members of the public who wish to make written comments during the meeting may email the clerk at clerk at kernlafco.org. Every effort will be made to read your comment into the record. If a comment is received after the comment portion of the meeting, but before the meeting is adjourned, the comment will still be included as a part of the record of the meeting, but will not be read into the record. Madam Clerk, could we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Here. Commissioner Couch? Commissioner Crump? Here. Commissioner Fowler? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Parlier? Here. Commissioner Sanders? Here. Commissioner Scribner? Here. Commissioner Saragoza? Here. Roll call complete. Thank you. Commissioner Sanders, would you lead us in the pledge? Yes. Let's stand. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now we have our teleconference meeting requirements, discussion and possible minute action, meeting protocol, a motion to hold the board meeting by teleconference pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 and Government Code Section 54953E and finding that there is a proclaimed state of emergency and local officials have recommended measures to promote social distancing, all as required by AB 361, Section 54953E. Mr. Knox. Yes, it's my recommendation to approve findings of a state of emergency and local official have recommended measures to promote social distancing as per the requirements of AB 361. Is there public comment on this item? No one from home? Are there commission comments or questions? No? All right. Uh, we need a motion for this action or our meeting ends. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Sanders. Commissioner Sanders, thank you. Do we have a second? Second, McKibben. Thank you, Commissioner McKibben. May we have the roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? 
Aye. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Yes. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes, the minutes of September 28th meeting. Is there public comment on those minutes? Commission comments or questions or corrections? May I have a motion to approve? Motion Crump. Thank you, Commissioner Crump. May I have a second, second please? Second, Zaragoza. Thank you, Commissioner Zaragoza. Could we have the roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, now we're ready for public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. We have no one in the room, but do we have anyone at home? No. We'll go on to determination proceeding. Uh, item 1808, State Controller Inactive List, a vote is required. Accept list pursuant to Government Code Section 56879A on or before November 1, 2018, and every year thereafter, the controller shall create a list of special districts that are inactive as defined in Section 56042 based upon the financial records received by the controller pursuant to Section 53891. The Commission shall initiate dissolution of inactive districts by resolution within 90 days of receiving notification from the controller pursuant to Subdivision A. Unless the Commission determines that the district does not meet the criteria set forth in Section 56042. The Commission shall dissolve inactive districts. The Commission shall hold one public hearing on the dissolution of an inactive district pursuant to this section no more than 90 days following the adoption of the resolution initiating, initiating dissolution. Wow, Mr. Knox. Yes. Hit it. The, the passage of SB 448 several years ago created a process to streamline the dis dissolution of inactive districts. Part of the process is for the state controller to publish a statewide list of inactive districts, which you just mentioned. Kern Valley Resource Conservation District is on the list for 2022. In order to consider the dissolution of the district, which is next on our agenda, the commission must first accept the list. So it's my recommendation to accept the con state controller's office list on inactive special districts, specifically Kern Valley Resource Conservation District. Right. Is there public comment on this item? Ms. Menchaca, anybody at home? All right. Are there commission comments or questions? I'm ready for a motion on this item to accept the controller recommendation of the inactivity of the Kern Valley District. Do I hear a motion, please? A motion, Sanders. Thank you. Second, please. Second, Crump. Commissioner Crump, thank you. May we have the roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ayun? Aye. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Yes. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Our next item is notice of public hearings. 1809 Kern Valley Resource Conservation District Dissolution. Consideration of dissolution for the Kern Valley Resource Conservation District. The district was acknowledged by the State Controller's Office and determined by Kern LAFCO, we just did, to be inactive and eligible for streamlined dissolution process 
as outlined in SB 448. Mr. Knox. For those of you who have been on the commission for a while, you're aware of the many twists and turns that staff's efforts to either, either re-establish the, the, or dissolve the inactive Kern Valley Resource Conservation District. There continue, continues to be twists and turns, so I'm going to provide some of the historical details and then provide an update on where things are potentially headed. Five years ago, Mr. Rice and myself went and met with several former member, board members of Kern Valley Resource Conservation District. They acknowledged the district had been inactive and wanted to re regain active status and get started again. The problem was that they were inactive for so long there wasn't a quorum of the board to call an election which would be required by the district's bylaws. Since that wasn't an option, I went to county council to see if it was possible for the board of supervisors to appoint a new board. After several conversations and several months, the answer was no. Without an active board or the ability to appoint a new board, the only option is to dissolve the district. Dissolution alone does not address that the Kern River drainage, which Kern Valley RCD was supposed to serve, could use an active RCD to address conservation, flood control, fire mitigation, and a host of land-related projects. The obvious choice is to hatch be Resource Conservation District, which is adjacent and covers similar territory. Tehachapi, like many other special districts, does not have a budget for items such as annexations. This, tur this turned into a search for outside funding. At the time, the Department of Conservation had funds, but the source was drying up and would not be available for long. Meantime, I was trying to convince the State Controller's Office to put Kern Valley RCD onto the inactive list. In order to be placed on the inactive list, the district has to meet several criterias, criteria, including having no assets. A quirk in the county system placed a few dollars of interest into Kern Valley's RCD account, making the district technically not eligible. By the time we got the issue resolved, we were on into the next fiscal year and the Department of Conservation funding was gone. In 2021, the State Controller's Office put the district on the inactive list and then had the nerve to ask whether the district was going to be dissolved. I told them to pound sand and remind them that because of their bureaucratic blunders, I no longer had funding. All this was going on while the state was in the middle of some of the worst forest fires in state history, the kind of fires that good fire mitigation management would have been tremendously helpful in addressing. Yes, fire mitigation is one of the services that CSDs can provide. I did not give up. We contacted BLM, County Fire, CSDA, and a whole host of, host of other agencies and friends to try to come up with, with another funding source, but to no available. A month ago, I received a 2022 State Controller's Office inactive list. Again, Kern Valley RCD was listed. I could continue to be aggressive with the State Controller's Office, but the fact of the matter is the district needs to be dissolved whether we find a successor district for the area or not. The dissolution does not cost much. It's the annexation with a, with a district that runs into Tulare County that's very expensive. Basically because the district is in two counties, we have to go through the entire price process twice, once here in Kern and once in Tulare County. Clearly, it's time to dissolve the district. We started the, pro the process and put out notices, and all of a sudden there's interest again. Long story short, Tatch B RCD believes they may have a funding source and asked about a possible continuance of this item. I s discussed this with two other board members last week and with a, s yeah, I've lost my sp spot. Um, I discussed this with, their, with two other board members last week. And with a special meeting of on Monday, Tashby RCD confirmed their interest and will apply for new funding. The district originally asked to continue this item until they have the, an, an annexation application ready. An application would take several months and we would have to terminate this proceeding and start over again, costing more money and time. All that to say is that the inactive district is ready to be dissolved. We hope in the future we can annex this area into an active RCD and provide services the area has been missing for the last half century. 
There are specific findings that must be made in order to dissolve the district. Kern Valley RCD has not operated for several decades. The district does not exist in the assessor's tax roll, does not have a board, no known assets or liabilities, no surviving minutes, agendas, audits, or budgets. We are unaware of any current claims against the district. From our extensive research, there appears to be little record or existence outside of LAFCO and the county historical files. With that is my recommendation that the commission adopt the environmental document. It is further recommended that the commission approve the dissolution of Kern Valley RCD. Thank you. Are there any public comments? I see none. Were any statements or letters received on this matter? No, I, I received some phone calls of interest and once I explained to them what we're doing, everyone seemed to be happy with the process. Okay. Are there any commission comments or questions? I'll call for a motion. Motion McKibben. Thank you, Commissioner McKibben. May I have a second, please? Second, Sanders. Thank you, Commissioner Sanders. Could we have the roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner San Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion pass. Thank you. Next on our agenda are commission items. The appointment of chair and vice chair, Mr. Knox. Yes. It's time again for the commission to choose a new chair and vice chair for the upcoming year. There is a tradition of a rotation between the different categories of commissioners to ensure that each gets their turn at being chair. The rotation is county, public, special district, city, and then back to county again. This is our tradition and not a policy, therefore anyone can put their names into nomination if they'd like to be considered for one of the two positions. If the commission chooses to stay with the tradition, that would mean that Commissioner McKibben, who represents special districts, would move from vice chair to chair. You might remember begrudgingly that Commissioner McKibben said he would do it, but under protest. In discussing this with Commissioner Sa Commissioners Sanders and McKibben, Commissioner Sanders indicated that she would be inclined to put her name into nomin nomination now that her special district election is complete. If you choose to appoint Commissioner Sanders as chair, there is a log logistics issue. She lives and works in the high desert portion of Kern County. Uh, getting items such as checks signed monthly will need to be accomplished here locally. Currently, Commissioner Fowlers, McKibben, and Scribner have authority to sign checks. I would ask that I be able to continue relying on each to continue to sign each month. And we can work on getting a, a, a sheet out that shows what the checks are being signed so the chair knows what, what those are. Uh, even if they're not actually doing the signatures themselves. Next in line for the vice chair would be cities. Again, we running in, run into a timing issue. With Commissioner Parlier stepping down, the city of Bakersfield will not appoint a new council member to the commission until early January. So we don't know who that will be yet. C Commissioner Crump could serve as chair, but as the but as next in line to be chair, the Maricopa seat he currently occupies will be vacated in mid-2024 and presumably go to Ridgecrest. It doesn't make sense for, to place Commissioner Crump in line for the seat to be vacated midway through the term. Sorry. Um, that leaves Commissioner Ione as the only city representative. I've discussed this with Commissioner Ione, and he is willing to serve in the capacity of vice chair for 2023 if the commission so chooses to appoint. And for a recommendation, recommendation, I don't believe it would be appropriate for me to make a recommendation on the election of officers, as you're my bosses. Uh, as such, I turn back to the chair. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Um, a question for council. Can we address a slate? Uh, can we put can those Can you address two? a slate? Can we produce a slate of officers, which would be Sanders and Ione? Yes. Okay. Oh, all right. We're open to nominations. Madam Chair, I'll move that. Oh. Um, as you've suggested, Sanders, Chair, and I own Vice Chair. Great, thank you. Commissioner Scrivener, do I have a second to that? Second, Saragosa. 
Thank you, Commissioner Zaragoza. Could we have the roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you very much and congratulations to Commissioner Sanders and Commissioner Ione. That's good to have that arranged now. Why are you why are you smiling so broadly? <laughs> <laughs> I've said this is my last hurrah. Soon it will be her hurrah. <laughs> Incoming hurrah. Um, all right. Uh, next item on the agenda is the report of definition of substantially surrounded. This is a continued item. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Knott. Oh, let me read my line first. Discussion with chair regarding referral to policy committee to postpone meeting until after new chair and policy committee are seated. Yeah. Mr. Knox. At the September meeting, there was a referral to take the issue of the definition of substantially surrounded back to the policy committee. After dis discussion with the city of Bakersfield staff and our chair, a decision was made to hold off until after the first of the year. The city does not have any applications in the process that will be potentially substantially surrounded, so there's not a lot of urgency. We also know that Commissioner Parley, Parlier is stepping down off the commission, and the city will not appoint a new commissioner until January. Next year's chair, will, which we now know as Commissioner Sanders, uh, will also make new committee assignments in January, so we'll get that done. Uh, since we are having a policy committee, there are other topics I would like to bring to the committee. I don't have a complete list, but here are a few s subjects I would like to discuss. Uh, municipal service review com compliance, policy for remote attendance and closed session, sphere of influence questionnaire compliance, and use of notice of exemptions, and possible fee schedule additions. There may be additional items for referral after hearing the Senate's general, general plan update, which we'll get to um, later what's happening with that. And, and with that, that's the end of my report. Oops. Our next item on the agenda is recognition of Commissioner Parlier for his years of service to Kern Lafco. Um, Mr. Scribner, would you like to make comments? I would, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, well, this uh, obviously um, is great that we're recognizing Chris, but it is bittersweet because we're we're losing him as a, at least in this capacity, as a public servant. Um, you know, uh, I used to represent the same ward as uh, Commissioner Parlier, Ward Seven at the city, and so um, throughout the years, we've we've had an opportunity to to. Um, mutually work on some constituent issues um, and that's been a good experience but um, I think the the best experience that I that I think we've had together was something that's really germane to LAFCO and that's when we went out door to door um, talking to folks that live in county pockets um, we had a small one in the Denon area and then another one that's a little bit west of that um, kind of the Denon area is like 99 in Panama and then to the west um, and uh, it was just, I think, a really great example, A, of two elected officials going and talking to their mutual constituents at the door um, together, but it also represented, I think, really good government because we identified that, frankly, the city was in a lot better position to provide good service to the folks that live in those county pockets because of the fact that if they called 911, it would be a sheriff's deputy that would have to respond from maybe the Lamont area or out in uh, the east, southeast Bakersfield area and so it, it really wasn't efficient in that in that sense and um, I remember when I first was running for City Council and um, this would be back in 2010 and you know you have if anybody's ever you know used them you run, you have your walk sheet with all your voters and I would be walking down a street and all of a sudden it the the list would stop but I'm at, I'm thinking but there are all these houses that are here and what's wrong with the road the road doesn't look as good as it did you know in this area where I was walking before and the situation was is that I had come across a county pocket and you know at the time I, I didn't really have any idea of that um, because I was just running for office but you know that kind of thing where the the city road paver would stop and then go around the county pocket and then start paving again 
Um, those aren't examples of good government, but I think it is when you annex those, those county pockets. So the, the road paver just keeps on going. Um, and uh, when you have a 911 call, you could have a, a Bakersfield police officer that was sitting at the local park, but under old circumstances, unable to respond in that county pocket, but now obviously is able to. And so a lot more efficient, a lot, a lot faster, and also saves money because it isn't efficient nor for the county to go in and, and pave a small section of street uh, when the city was, you know, was just there in, in previous years. And so Chris and I, I think, really sort of bonded over that experience. Um, we felt really good about um, that, uh, that effort uh, because we felt that it was the best thing for the people that we mutually represented. And so I think that that's just one small example of the kind of service that Chris um, had provided for the last eight years to his constituents in Ward 7 um, very much. Um, constituent service oriented and very accessible and so it's been an honor and a privilege to get to work with you Chris and we wish you the best in your future endeavors and uh, thank you so much for your service on LAFCO and also on the Bakersfield City Council. Thanks Zach. Thank you. you have, the floor is yours if you'd like to say anything to us. Well, thank you for those very kind words, Zach. Uh, we really did bond together uh, on, our, on our walks. I remember some of those days were over 100 degrees when you're walking around. And uh, we really, even with that uh, extra temperature, we really did enjoy doing it. And I know we enjoyed talking to those constituents. And a lot of times you don't have uh, county and city government working together for uh, the behalf of you know citizens because everybody you know wants to protect what they have. And uh, we just focused on good government and I think we made uh, some wise choices there, and I think people are, are better off for it. So I thank you. Thank, and well, thank you, Chris, and also thank you to LAFCO for approving the annexations. <laughs> absolutely, we, we absolutely. <laughs> it would be nowhere without LAFCO. <laughs> sure. uh, well, it's been my pleasure um, as a Bakersfield City representative to, to serve LAFCO. Uh, I would like to thank the chair, too, all the commissioners, and of course, Blair and, and, and the staff of LAFCO. Uh, you really make it look easy and you make the, the commissioners look good. So, uh, so thank you for that support. Um, you know, last year has been pretty rough for me health wise and I'm thankful that I'm at this meeting mm -hmm. and uh, I just want to thank everybody for their support and prayers. And uh, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, commissioner. And you'll be in our thoughts and prayers. The next item on our agenda is general business, approval of monthly expense list 22-09. Comment? I have no comments other than we have, it's been two months, so we have two, two. Uh, months worth of expenses here. All right. Were there uh, questions or comments from the commission on either of those lists? Madam Chair, I'll move approval. Thank you. Scrivener. Commissioner Scrivener, do uh, we have a second? I did have a question. Oh, go right ahead. Uh, uh, Rookie question. <laughs> um, I think it's um, an expenditure uh, dated October 31st, and um, and it's from a uh, CPA firm. It's uh, Chenault Baker and Company, and it says services audit support. In in that same week, there's another expense for audit services from Brown Armstrong. Well, refresh my memory. We have two CPA firms for a particular reason, and I forgot what they were. Sure. Uh, Schnault Baker is our, account our accountant, okay. and we have a monthly expense with them. And then when it comes to audit time, there is a separate expense that goes with the audit oh. because that takes them additional time to provide information to the audit firm we hired, which is Brown Armstrong, which comes in and audits the books of LAFCO which is auditing the books of Chanel Baker that they keep for us. Uh, that way you have a separate independent source looking at our, our finances and looking to make sure that we are doing them accurately. Um, and how often is Brown Armstrong auditing LAFCO? Once a year. Once a year, okay. So and this we, is an we, annual, we, annual audit. We have, I think, two or three years left on our contract okay. with, with them. Thank and um, I, I, I had my notes later, but um, I was hoping that they would have the audit for this meeting, but I'm expecting for them to have it in January. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Not a rookie question. No. 
That was a good one. We do need a second to that motion, however. Second, Zaragoza. All right, may we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is our 2023 commission schedule. We need to approve the meeting schedule. Mr. Knox? Be before we do that, did we approve both lists or did we just approve the first one? Oh. There's, there's two, two lists because it's two separate months. Well, let me ask our motion maker and second, were, did that apply to uh, the expense list 2209? Can I say motion? yes? Yes, you could. <laughs> <laughs> that would make things less complicated. Did your second apply to that? Yes. <laughs> All right. So that motion passed. Now let's <laughs> okay. talk about the second one. This is 22-10. Um, Are there commission questions about that one? May I hear a motion? You two gentlemen would like to re-up. Go right ahead. <laughs> motion McKibben. Thank you, Commissioner McKibben. Second, Second Sanders. Second Sanders. Could we have the roll call? Thank you. Commissioner Young? Aye. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Now we'll go to the commission schedule. Go ahead, Mr. Knox. Okay. There's nothing unusual about the schedule for 2023. This commission will generally meet on the fourth Wednesday of each month not to be confused with the last Wednesday of each month. We are dark in July and combine the November, December meetings into one early in December, like we are doing right now. So it's my recommendation we approve the schedule as presented. Is there public comment on this item? My uh, laptop has died. I'll fix it here in a second. Okay. Um, are there commission questions or comments? Is there a motion to accept the schedule as presented? Motion to accept. Motion, Ion. Well, Commissioner Ion, a motion. Second, Zaragoza. Thank you, Commissioner Zaragoza. Could we have a roll call on that, please? Commissioner Ion? Aye. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Our next item is legislation affecting meeting procedure. Mr. Knox. Yes. At the outbreak of COVID, it became apparent for the need to hold meetings virtually. AB 361 allowed for virtual or hybrid meetings if the commission first declared that, that the meeting was being held under a state of emergency, as we did earlier at, tonight. Colonel Afco has been using the provisions of AB 361 for approximately a year. The governor has announced that by the end of February of 2023, the COVID state of emergency would be lifted. And unless a new emergency was declared, the provisions of AB 361 no longer apply. So we can't use that section of code anymore. Starting in January 1st of 2023, um, AB 2449 again modifies the Brown Act to allow for hybrid meetings. In this case, there does not need to be a state of emergency, but a quorum of the commission must be in person at a singular location accessible to the public. Let me say that again. A quorum of the commission must be in person at a singular location accessible to the public. That means that a quorum of the commission must be in the room. If we have all nine attending in the meeting, uh, in the meeting, at least five must be in person. If we have seven attending, attending, at least four must be in person. And if we have five, which would be the smallest we could have a quorum uh, for the meeting, we at least need to have three in the meeting. Uh, tr traditionally, there's been an assumption that the commissioners, uh, that commissioners were going to attend the meeting unless they indicated otherwise. While th there is rarely an issue with obtaining a quorum, often there is a meeting day, we will not attend notification or no communication at all. 
This does not allow for proper notification to alternate members in a timely manner. To use this legislation, we must have an early and accurate head count of who's going to be attending and from where. If for some reason we don't have a quorum of the attending members in the room, the meeting cannot continue. To use the provisions of AB 2449, we will have to, to be diligent in getting a head count from each commissioner every, every, before every meeting. That means Ms. Menchaco will be hunting you down and you will not <laughs> <laughs> until we hear from you. Um, there are several options for the commission to consider. The first is to use the provisions of 2449 and have each commissioner confirm their attendance and location before the meeting. <coughs> With that, we will continue to meet at KernCog. Uh, a second option is return to in-person meetings of the commission. Uh, we could continue to hold these meetings here at KernCog, or we could return to the Board of Supervisors Chamber if we do that. I should know that if we continue the hybrid approach and it doesn't work, we can always go back to in-person -per meetings at any time we, we choose. With that as my recommendation to use the AB 2449 provisions to hold hybrid meetings, develop a system for commissioners to notify LAFCO of their absence or attendance in person or by teleconference. Uh, are there public comments or questions? Are there commission, commissioner comments or questions? I'm not sure I completely understand. Would you give us those two options one more time? Okay. The first option is um, that we use AB 2449 to have hybrid meetings and we have to develop a system whereby we get notification from each of the commissioners of whether they're going to be attending mm -hmm. and whether they're going to be attending in person or by hybrid, by teleconference. Uh, and we're going to have to make, find out whether we'll have enough in person to be a quorum of that number. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Okay. So we have several commissioners who have to drive a distance. Yes. And although we have a chairman who drives a great distance and may want to have input on this, what about you, Commissioner Sanders? For me personally, I don't have any problem driving over to Bakersfield, whether it's here at Kern Cog or if it's at the uh, uh, Kern County building. Yeah. I don't. It's a, it's a once a month meeting as long as I don't have to come to town every every week to sign checks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. You know, and I don't have a problem with that. All right. And Commissioner yeah. Crump, you also travel a distance to us? He's yeah. nodding. All right. Well, I'm interested in commission thoughts on this. Mr. Scrivener, your thoughts? I just need the password. Well, my, my thoughts are um, that because we have to have a, a quorum that's in person, I think it's going to be incumbent upon all of us to attempt to be here um, in person. Um, but this, if we do allow for the hybrid um, option, that that could that could help us if we maybe um, you know you have a commissioner that for some reason. Um, is unable to make it down here, is out of town, or, or whatever it is, but could still participate. So I can see some value, value there. Um, I, you know, I thought about uh, which which venue we would like, and you know, that's you know, obviously I'm, you know, I'm totally used to the board chambers, but also I serve on Cog, so I'm used to coming here too. I don't know what is easier for everybody else when it comes to parking and accessibility, those kinds of things. Um, and so, but I know we have to be here if we do the hybrid option. Right. Um, and so if we don't, if we're saying, look, we're just going to go back to in-person meetings and I think the board chambers, that, you know, that becomes an either or, either we do it here or there. But if we want to keep the hybrid option, we have to continue to meet here. So I, for, so for me, um, as long as we're allowed to do it, I can see the convenience of having hybrid as an option for commissioners. Mm -hmm. But as I said in the beginning, um, it's going to be up to us if we can make it to be here. So you make sure you have that in-person quorum. But do you, have I encapsulated that uh, accurately, you, staff? You have, and you're, you're correct. We don't, 
the board su board supervisors chambers does not have the capacity to do hi a hybrid meeting mm -hmm. like we have here. Mm -hmm. um, Commissioner Zaragoza. I was just going to say we, we actually have a commissioner tonight that's not feeling well and decided it'd be better for him to, to attend remotely than than maybe expose the rest of the commission. So they're just a health issue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, right. Uh, I'm a resident of Bakersfield and uh, I can go to either uh, location, but I like the current car location. Um, parking is no problem. And uh, as a public commissioner, I think it also allows us, in the hybrid option, to allows us to have residents obtain uh, input or give us input via the internet, mm -hmm. whether it's in Bakersfield or Tatsby or Ridgecrest or wherever. So I like the hybrid. I think it gives us more exposure to constituents. So Would you like to phrase that in the form of a motion? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did I talk you into that a little bit? I can do that, I think. I might need some help. Uh, I make a motion to, uh, what was the AB? AB? 2449. I would like to make a motion that we uh, choose to continue with AB 2449 and uh, utilize the hybrid option for meetings here at the Kern Cog location for next year. Right. Do I hear a second to that motion? Is there discussion, first of all? Is there a second? Second, Sanders. Thank you, Commissioner Sanders. Let's have a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. So we'll continue as a hybrid. Good. As long as it works, and if it doesn't, okay. we can always go back to in person, choose that at any, at any point. You're um, not really continuing with the same process. It's a different process, but it is hybrid. Okay. I stand corrected on that. All right. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Just nod your head. <laughs> Our next item is uh, re City of Bakersfield general plan. The City of Bakersfield has requested this item be continued until the January meeting. Mr. Knox. The City of Bakersfield has requested that this be continued <laughs> until the January meeting. Uh, okay. Gary's here if he wants to say a few comments about... <laughs> uh, Gary Hallen, Assistant City Manager of City of Bakersfield. Um, we had a scheduling conflict um, and that's merely the, the issue we had tonight. Um, I, my preference is to have uh, my number one draft pick give you the presentation, which would be our development services director, Mr. Boyle, who you're very, very familiar with, who has given his life up for this general plan. So he's, uh, he's our best uh, face for the general plan. So I'd, I'd rather have uh, him come to this commission and give you a full update on where the city is. So uh, he had a scheduling conflict tonight, um, but he'll be back uh, come January. Okay. Yep. We'll see him and you on the 25th of January then. All right. Next item, executive officer miscellaneous items. Yes. Mr. Knox. Uh, staff and two commissioners attended the Calafco conference in early November. I wasn't planning on attending, but we had a late dropout and couldn't get reimbursed for the conference fee. I only stayed the first day as I returned to Bakersfield early to attend the court hearing on the Buena Vista case, uh, which we'll be talking about in closed session agenda a little bit later. I'm glad I left when I did. That way I didn't have to help Commissioner Ion get his flat tire fixed. Uh oh, <laughs> oh dear. Bud tells quite a story about navigating their road closure to find their way back to the hotel. Uh, Thank you, Bud, for doing that for our commissioner. Um, our number one rule in the office is make sure the commission is happy. The second rule is make sure payroll is done because that's what makes staff happy. So he, he, did, he did an admirable job helping uh, Commissioner Ion with, his, with getting his tire fixed. Um, 
Joking aside, I appreciate the sh short amount of time I was able to spend with Commissioner Zion and Commissioner Zaragoza. Uh, they might have additional thoughts on the conference that they might want to share. Uh, if you're happy to do that now, if you have something. Um, I attended for my second year. Uh, it's not consistent because we didn't have anything during the COVID years. <laughs> but uh, and it was in Orange County near the uh, John Wayne International Airport which was a very nice uh, venue. Um, I think overall, um, it was well presented and they had at least two to 300 folks. And once again, I think this is uh, interesting, but when you are in a big room with about 300 people from about 55 or 56 counties, it, you get a lot of uh, <laughs> interesting stories to mm -hmm. share and in opinions and, and how things are done in other areas. Uh, I think overall the Kern County is blessed. We, we do have a good staff and we do things satisfactorily I believe. And other counties are a little bit more struggling because they're smaller and, and they might be as big as Kern County. They're just not as staffed as well. And then there are other counties that are very urbanized and they have four or five times the staff that we have here. Mm -hmm. yes. I can see why, because the population is like three to five, six mm -hmm. million people in the county, and they definitely need staff. And uh, the topics covered everything. And uh, I think, I'm not sure, but I believe uh, Blair might be talking about some issues about the municipal review process that's coming up and that we might want to look into, which I believe is pretty important. And uh, they had a topic on CEQA. <laughs> which is interesting to say the least. So, uh, no, it was really good, and uh, I encourage folks, if they can, to attend the next one, which I believe might be in Monterey, correct? I believe that's correct, yes. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for representing us. And Commissioner Ayon, do you have any comments you'd like to make about the conference? Oh, uh, just, I'm a little bit, I'll keep this brief. I'm un under the weather, but I want to thank Bud for helping me out. Uh, I think it was a 795 uh, freeway where, it was it was lunchtime and tea was I was like quarter oh, quarter of my well actually real close to the tire shop but we couldn't get over but just to add it was it was a good presentation but Mr. Saragosa asked a lot of questions which which was 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 good because it kept it uh it was very informative so uh, Kern Lafco was represented well thanks Thank bud you. I owe you a, a soda or a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Go take your cold medicine. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, other comments? I, I sure do. Uh, in addition to Commissioner Parlier stepping off the commission, we have one more leaving, which creates a vacancy for the special district alternate. Commissioner Shavira has won a seat on the Taft City Council. As such, he cannot serve as the alternate special district representative on LAFCO as per the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act. They consider that a conflict. We congratulate uh, Mr. Severe on his victory and may just see him again when Taft turn, Taft's turn comes up on the commission in a couple of years. Fortunately, Commissioner Sanders and McKibben both miss very few meetings, so special districts will always be well represented. One of our staff goals for 2023 is to transition to our own website. For years, we've been utilizing the county's website for a couple of web, web pages. The site greatly limits what we can share with the public and other agencies. We'll be looking at different hosts to see what works best and what we're trying to accomplish and likely bring a recommendation to commission about the same time as next year's budget because we're going to need to have it in the budget. Um, I mentioned the audit already, which we hope to have in January. Uh, Next week, proponents for the creation of a community service district will start circulating a petition to begin the process. The proposed district boundaries covers Lost Hills and the surrounding acreage. The, proposed, uh, the, purpose of the, uh, the purpose is to provide recreation of park services, lighting, and street state, st streetscape maintenance. Your sa staff has been working with representatives of the wonderful company on this project for a considerable amount of time. And that's about all the details I can safely share with you without getting the Brown Act restrictions about starting to consider items before you have the whole package. So I keep, I gotta keep this guy happy. Uh, there's also a backstory that I can share later on um, that goes back 20 years on this project when I worked for Supervisor Watson. 
Uh, Mr. Rice, can you put the statistics, yearly statistics up on the screen for, for everyone? The, the statistics that Mr. Rice is putting on the screen tells a partial story of what we have accomplished in the past year. Oh, that's going to be hard to read. While he's doing that, I'll keep talking. The work we do is a mixture of proceedings that are initiated outside of LAFCO and on rare occasions are initiated by the commission itself. Today's dissolution of Kern Valley RCD is an example of a commission in initiated proceeding. What I'm saying nicely is that staff has limited ability to do more proceedings than are submitted. There are two statistics that stand out, to, stand out the most to me. One is the small number of sphere of influence questionnaires that we have, been, we have reviewed and a large number of uh, map reviews that we've done. We have made multiple attempts to reach out to special districts and urge them to complete their SOI questionnaire. Currently, we have less than 50% have returned those questionnaires. That's not good enough. Encouragement does not seem to be working and there is not much we can do to threaten them short of a lawsuit or threatening dissolution of their district. Uh, I'm looking for creative ways to bring us into compliance for the sphere, for the sphere reviews. Uh, with the map reviews that we've been doing, we've been reconfirming the boundaries of cities and special districts. And by we, I mean Bud. That's one of his pet projects. There are a large number of maps and legal descriptions that are inaccurate or unclear as to the final map. Older maps were often what we call fat lined this is a term where the map maker would use a wide pin to outline the area so that it was difficult to determine if the boundaries stopped at the sidewalk, went to the center of the road, or t took in the entire road. Another example is the case of an older district that the legal description of the boundary ends at a canal. The only problem is the canal has relocated twice since the original map. We have aerial pictures to prove it. In other cases, the map was changed at the commission but the record map was the original and not the modified map that was approved by the commission. I want to be clear that there is not a pattern of inaccuracy. Most appear to be common mistakes or, um, uh, or were common practices, practices in the day throughout the years. Um, you know, for LAFCO that goes back to 64 and the county uh, before that. Um, uh, cleaning up these disc discrepancies is important for no on a number of levels. It complicates the delivery of services, has potential tax implications, and makes future adjustment of uh, adjacent annexations more difficult. As mentioned earlier, one of our goals for the next year is to have our own website. One of the site on the site, we plan to have a map of cities and special districts available by GIS. If you're a member of the public and you want to know the boundary of a specific city or special district. You should be able to find that easily online. Before putting maps online, it's important for the maps to be somewhat accurate. And for Mr. Schroeder's purposes, we are not talking about displaying maps that are considered artwork, and we would have a disclaimer about the map's use. I keep him in mind. Um, so that's that project. Um, lastly, I would like to say, um, and we're in the last, it's been a couple of weeks since Thanksgiving, but it's never like too late to give thanks. This year we continued with the transition of staff, which is now complete. Rebecca Moore did a wonderful job organizing the clerk position and training Miss, Miss, Miss Menchaca, not only how to do the clerk's job, but how to deal with Mr. Rice and myself. No small feat. We will likely have some good news concerning Rebecca at the January meeting. Um, she's going to continue op help, helping us through the process, hopefully. Uh, Mr. Rice continues to be the hub around how our office, office operates. The receptionist position was only supposed to be temporary, but we enjoyed having Lily Moore around so much. She lasted almost three years. Thank you, Bud and Patty, for not only the work you do, but for who you are. I appreciate you both. Lastly, I want to thank each commissioner for trusting me to make these moves. We are a strong organization today because we have such a strong staff. And with that, our next meeting is January 25th. And that's the end of my report. I have one quick question for you, uh, just FYI for anyone who might be following LAFCO. Could you explain how the city uh, representatives are seated? 
Yes. Um, cities, there, there's there's a process that goes through um, the Association of Cities where they select the city representative. The, let me back up. The city of Bakersfield, as the largest um, city in Kern County, has a permanent seat on LAFCO. The other two seats are rotated among the, top, the, the other 10 cities, and we do it alphabetically. So right now we're at Maricopa and McFarland. Mm -hmm. In two years, uh, Mr. Crump will step off, and Ridgecrest being the next in line uh, will likely, likely be, be next on the commission. Um, there, there is technically a committee that, that does these appointments to us, but they have this protocol. So unless for some reason Ridgecrest says we're not ready to do that right now, they could actually go to, I think, Shafter's next and say, mm -hmm. Shafter, would you do this next? And we'll do it again in, in two years. That's happened in the past, um, but that's generally how, how um, the selection happens and we do it alphabetically and when we get to after Wasco we come back to Arvin and go all over again okay thank you for that explanation Th they're also staggered on two year on it's a staggered four year four year term so he serves four years but two years in the middle of that we switch to the other district and so every two years we get at least one one new representative one new representative so, thank you yep all right and on behalf of the Commission I thank all of you for doing such a wonderful job for LAFCO and helping us through the process to do our jobs properly. So our council and our executive officer, Bud, and of course, Patty, thank you very much. Commissioner Zaragoza. Right, I uh, wanted to just follow up real quick. Thank you for that update on the stats. Very interesting. A lot of, lot of work was done. Could you send me a copy of that in your spare time next week? Just, I'm just curious, okay. I'd like to put that in my folder. Uh, something you mentioned was um, um, the challenge for the, uh, I think they call it the five-year sphere of influence reviews, getting that information. Correct. Is that something we'll be discussing at the next policy committee meeting? Yes. Okay. Yes. That, so was, on, that was on my list of items. Kind of that brainstorm I on that? Yes. Okay. Right. Um, uh, for those who are attending. And then the other question was, um, are you still looking for like an intern or staff to help out in the office? Is that what, something you mentioned? Or? If you have somebody in mind, we would <laughs> we'd be, well, we'd entertain that. We do I, have, I we don't do want to put work. Gary Hallen on the spot, <laughs> but since he's here, he may not know this because I know the city of Bakersfield is, is very large and they have specialized people working on various things. But um, I keep hearing a term, it's called... Um, the a Analyst Fellow, and it's a program through, I'm not sure, is it the Community Foundation? And it appears the city of Bakersfield has these bright young interns, college students working there, and they're getting paid, and just wondering if LAFCO has any way to participate in this innovative program. So uh, actually, yeah, the city applied for a state grant um, so the, the fellows that the city has hired is through, um, funded through a, a state grant process. So that's the Ca uh, California uh, Foundation. So I'm not sure um, exactly uh, the answer to your question on can the city, which receives the funding, put people in different areas that aren't technically employed by the city so it's something I can follow up on um, because we are the grant recipient uh, I'm not sure if that would be yeah. something that we could transfer Thank you. but it's it's a it's an interesting question and we'll we'll check into it okay I appreciate that thank you that was it I have a question regarding that question would that be some kind of a conflict of interest for LAFCO I, I wouldn't think so but I'll let I'll let the attorney answer that. <laughs> you know, I'd have to see um, what the city's um, interest in in those employees are and how uh, they would send them over to us. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's a city matter on the agenda, on one of our agendas, there might be some issue there. Um, just generally, I don't see a conflict of interest. <laughs> 
Well, that's something we'll learn about in January, no doubt. <laughs> All right. Um, I didn't see on the agenda any other opportunity for commission items. Are there other commission items before we go? No? All right. We're, we're not going anywhere. Well, we're going somewhere. We're, we're staying <laughs> You're here. You're staying here. All right. We're leasing. So now uh, we're going into closed session. Uh, this is the only room available to hold co closed session with commissioners online. At this time, we ask everyone who is not on the commission to please exit the room. For those online, we can place you in the virtual waiting room until closed session is finished. Um, if anyone has called in, there is not an opportunity to place you on hold. We'll have to say goodbye for now. We'll we will reopen we'll the room and bring anyone back from the virtual waiting room after the closed session is complete, and we'll announce any results as required. Thank we you. would ask Mr. St. Lawrence to remain uh, yeah. available. Yeah, making yeah. a presentation. <laughs>Motion, McKibben. And that's for how much, uh, Gary? For 6%. Yeah. Okay. Second. Do I hear a second? Second. So, motion from McKibben, second from Scrivener. Could we have a roll call vote? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Part no. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes motion pass. Congratulations. Thank you. I couldn't do it without my staff. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Schroeder, do we have anything else? No, we have there's to nothing do? else on the agenda, is there? Do you now do you announce the decision on the court case? Oh, that's right. On the court case. I think we're oh, not allowed. Oh, uh, no, we don't. We don't. That, that's a lit. We're not going to announce that. Uh, that that there's no other reportable action. No other reportable action yeah. okay. from closed session except your evaluation. All right, okay. um, we're ready to adjourn. Our next meeting will be January 25th, 2023, with Commissioner Sanders as our chair. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs>